Thanks for staying with, with us. Now, if you're just tuning in, we're discussing how to approach domestic violence legally. And we still, um, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Wayshow Africa One with the hashtag Wayshow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 And we have Lamy in the building, Pele. <laughs> <laughs> Traffic. <laughs> Looking, looking so and, 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 and I would have loved to banter on this your outfit. You're looking so amazing, but let us leave that one. Wow. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but how were you? How was the traffic, though? It was horrendous. Okay, so we're going to, we're going to come back to you, Nami, for you to um, talk to our guests and probably put your two cents because they are all lawyers. Trust me. I mean, I'm the only non-lawyer on oh, set she's, today. Our guess is yeah, she's a lawyer. So, um, Maomi, oh, Maomi, you're there. So when before we went on the break. Yeah. Before we went on the break, you were talking about access. And for me, that is the key thing that I think impedes people going to meet, um, what's it called, government or whatever. Because they are not even sure, first of all, how to access, you know, legal services. And secondly, maybe also the time it takes for them to process some of these um, cases in court and all of that. Don't you think those are also part of the reasons, um, what's it called, people do not go through the legal route when it comes to domestic, domestic violence? Absolutely. I think that's part of it. But also, most importantly, you know, the culture of silence, the social stigma, you know, normalization of violence. Um, I, I recall that there was a case where a woman went to report at the police station and, you know, outrightly, the police officer who attended to the woman said, this is a private matter. You know, you should go home and settle with your husband. And we've seen situations where women go to the police station and police also say, you know, the man is the head of the family. You know, you, you, you should just do whatever your husband tells you to do. So, but I think in general... Oh, Sugar, we're having challenges with our network. Okay, so Tammy, let, let me, sorry, let me come to you. Okay, why um, do you think people? I was going to answer the question. Yeah, yeah, th yeah you would answer Talking that. Talking about yeah. why people don't um, go, go through the legal. I yes. think in Lagos State, there's a special court for that, so okay. it fastens it. Okay. And especially when you go through the domestic violence response unit. Yes. They take it upon themselves to file on behalf of the complainant mm -hmm. and fastens it. Yeah, but yeah. Lami, so there are 36 states in Nigeria, right? Yeah. How many states are upwardly, are forward thinking, like Lagos State? AKT is. So look at AKT the has taken it upon themselves. They mm -hmm. have a very robust domestic violence law. Okay. Yeah. But this state that this violence case happened that we're using as a reference point to talk about why people don't go through legal routes. I think yeah. that's Kogi State, right? No, Benway. Benway State, rather. Yes. Wait, what's the law? And, and I was asking um, our guests before you came on the show that, do we not get to that point? You've lived abroad. Where if a neighbor hears something is happening, they call the police on your Okay, behalf. let me tell you what used to happen yes. in England. Quite a number of, I would say Nigerian, African women, when they have domestic violence issues, mm. they decline to call the police. So the police in the UK particularly now saw the rise in killings and all that, particularly to African women. Mm -hmm. So they now have to pass a law that even if you don't call the police and... The police take it upon themselves to go to the uh, to go to the scene, or a neighbor calls um, in the police. They can charge. They can yes. arrest the person because what women do abroad is even when the police come in, they will decline to talk. Yes. They won't talk, so is this and they an get African killed. Mentality because I yes. think it's an African culture. But oh, even me, I'm a lawyer. It happened to me right in England, and my mom didn't. She silenced me. Mm. I couldn't talk. Because she was particular about what people would say. When people back home, what would they say? They would say, you sent him to prison. And all that. So we're talking Even about me, a came. lawyer. Mm. So what do you think? It, right in England, when, when where they, my you... rights will be enforced. I, yeah. I was silenced by my parents. So it's mm. a lot of cultural I, reasons. I don't know if we have a mommy back. back. Yeah. But, 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 but okay, so Lami, now you are saying this. Can we not have that kind of thing replicated in Nigeria? Because you see, this 2020 has opened up so many cans of warmth. Like you go on social, today alone, I saw a video on Instagram, I, I was going to share, but you know, it's a, it's a private page, so you might not be able to see it. The girl was calling, this one is boyfriend, though. he's been living with her for six years, she's tired, he eats her money, and he, if you see the bat, battery, like all her face was swollen. Then this popular actress, what's her name, Cozy, 
and I'll be cussing, I'll be what's her name. That one also posted her. I mean, the rate of... But don't forget, domestic violence is a global phenomenon. That's, no, you're not getting my point. I'm saying that yeah. in Africa, you know, globally, yes. yeah. if it happens, you know, with even your so, own chest. Even some women keep quiet. I No, but not... Not on evil woman. You beat an evil woman and she'll keep quiet. Ah, some of it's them do. <laughs> it's, just like it's just more but I think yeah. Yes, but our yeah. own problem is deeply rooted in no, culture, culture and religion. Mm -hmm. There are times you go to church and your pastor is preaching. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it will be directly talking to you like, hey, so I'm a bad woman. Mm. You know, sometimes it will be hitting you like, oh. So what this pastor is actually saying, if you demand for your rights, in within your marriage, you are a bad woman. Mm. Do you understand? So yeah. sometimes the religious leaders need to be with him. Okay. Because most of them act as conciliators. Mm -hmm. And they are not. Instead of them to tell you, take the matter to the police, they will tell you to take it to church. <laughs> and they don't have the capacity to wade into the... You're supposed to go for counseling. And we know our rest people. We know, I think we have so them coming back. Yeah. Um, what's it called? The oh, who do you want to arrest? Cult, no. family, <laughs> family and the religious setting. They are you most, they are part of the problem. Okay, Omaumi, you work in an NGO, right? What is, I right. mean, like, this thing is, I'm really, really agitated about this. Can I not, can we not start fighting for, even if you, 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 you forgive the person, no problem. You are forgiving the person, but the law must take its course. Can't we do that? <laughs> What about your children? Start no. thinking about your children. No, I would, I would, my comment on that is that, yes, we have a legal framework, but our legal framework the implementation is also based on this approach that we call the survivor-centered approach. Mm -hmm. In development work, in providing social services, there is the, the survivor-centered approach, which we call the human rights-based approach, which, has, which focuses more on what the survivor wants. Mm -hmm. So with that, it's actually very difficult for you to impose on the survivor. Because at some point, you know, the survivor can also be allowed to say it never happened. Hmm. So at that point, you know, you become helpless. So, but I think that, you know, with the available resources or what survivors should be entitled to, I'll give Ekiti State as an example. Ekiti State has the most pragmatic legal framework on sexual and gender-based violence in Nigeria today. Lagos is leading, I mean, Lagos used to lead Ah, Ekiti has taken over. Right now. Yes, Ekiti has taken over, yes. So, and Ekiti State has this GBV law of 2019 where we have the Survivors Fund. The Survivors Fund is for every survivor who, is a, a, who, is, who has experienced sexual and gender-based violence. Even most of them are victims of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And this fund is supposed to help them rehabilitate. So if, for example, you're in a facility where you're being violated by your husband and you need to vacate that facility, this fund is also supposed to help you put a roof over your head. Mm -hmm. Right now, you know, it state as like a shelter home that has a vocational um, skill acquisition component of it. And that particular shelter also has a special place where you could put your, your child. So there's a crutch within that facility. You know, if as a mother, you need to vacate the premises for your husband, who is violating you. But one of the really great innovations introduced into the VAP Act is the protection order. Mm. But this protection order, you know, can only be issued by a high court judge. And it's like a restraining order that can restrain, you know, the perpetrator from further violating you as a woman, or even if it's the woman that is violating the husband, you know, the man, because a lot of times, you know, kind of say, well, one-sided, there are women who also beat their husband. But also to say that, you know, our programming around support for women is evidence-based. So we have a great body of evidence to show that women are most vulnerable when it comes to domestic violence. So we need to do more programming around that. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can. Okay. Go ahead, clearly. Oh, great. yeah. So that we need to do more programming around that. So we, we, we that kind of support, you know, for, for women, I think that you're able to address the issue of economic empowerment yeah. as you know a critical piece of access to justice mm -hmm. because when women are economically empowered i think it also helps them to take decisions i have also seen women you know who are even economically empowered already yet they are victims of violence they are even the ones financially responsible for the man yeah. yet it is still difficult for them to walk away from the relationship i think this is where the issue of societal pressure comes in where women feel that they need to live up to expect societal expectation 
and that when you know they are divorced you know the society sees them as a failure and you know i've talked about that earlier so overall in general i think that the really innovative pieces of those provisions states can actually learn from other states you know other states can learn from a state like a state adopt what really makes sense and then we have the of the the sex offenders register but i mean given that the focus of our conversation is on domestic violence so i want to keep it at that so other states can learn from a state like AKP, from a state like Lagos that criminalizes, you know, domestic violence and also doesn't pay lip service. You know, we are implementing the laws. Lagos is implementing. We have the domestic and sexual violence response team. And this unit has been decentralized across local government in, in, in Lagos state. Mm -hmm. There's a toll free line where people can call. Access is a problem. If people don't even know where to call where to access help in a simple and dignified manner, then how do you expect them to access help? So that's really key. We need to create more awareness on available channels. Okay. The Nigeria police has a major role to play in this. You know, we need specialized units within the Nigerian police force, which maybe sometimes we call the gender desk. With this, you know, people can be specially trained. But again, the question that comes to mind is in situations where those people are transferred to another division, then you start from, you know, you start from um, square zero, you're back to square zero. Hmm. But also the solution to this is, can we actually institutionalize some of these innovations so that we build institutions and not individuals? When we build institutions, our institutions are stronger, they are more responsive, and of course that would impact on institutional response. Absolutely. Let me take a few comments and I'll come to Lamy. Um, um, you have some comments as well. Isiaka says, hashtag way show. The violence occurs to both men and women. Everyone has a role to play. The neighbor who sees the violence must report. Then Laya is saying, money or economic empowerment plays a key role. I like that Ekiti State has a survival fund. And uh, that's what uh, Laya is saying. You have a, a have comment. I have a comment here from Angela that says, please, we need the law to take its course even when parties in the relationship fail to report their case. And I was just going to add that... Um, what Wumi said about we needing institutions just reminds me of President Obama's famous quote, Africa needs uh, strong yeah, institutions, institutions and not, strong not necessarily yeah. strong men. So I get the point about building institutions. Now, this comment, can I just make a comment? Quickly, on, quickly, because we have like one minute. On this, this one that says that neighbors also should report. You know, even in, from her example that she says that even, in the UK. even you don't want to tell about it. Mm. And a neighbor goes to report. Have you seen situations where people are fighting? And then you go and meet them, and suddenly they're all smiling. Mm. And it's like, you, what's your business? So what's your business? They, I thought we were fighting. No, we're not fighting. <laughs> what's your own? You're the devil. So it can be a little tricky there. It can mm. be a little tricky, mm -hmm. honestly, for people. You know what? Because we really ran out of time, I would just hear, I wow. mean, just one minute, you know, say something about this violence. But for um, Omaomi, thank you so much for, for coming tonight. We're going to bring you back because your 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 what's it called your initiative for us is dear to our hearts not only on violence also on sexual um offenders so we are going to definitely be buzzing you every now and then thank you so much for joining us Omami. thank you Omami. all right so, so let me quickly yes what's the question no i just said like you know in in, in a nutshell you know yes. you have been through this i, I wish you yes. had come in earlier because so you have been through yeah. this and you couldn't speak up yeah. you know so what finally gave you that courage to talk what if you I, want to advise any woman out there oh the issue is societal based and culture mm. it's not like people don't want to talk but people around you don't want to so talk. what made you to finally talk that's my point so if you want to talk to a woman okay. out there that is watching what would you say to her i told my mom it is time i'm moving mm. Then when she saw what I was going through, she saw it with her eyes and she, she agreed with me I had to move. But what I would say to another woman is I survived it. So another woman might not have survived it. Mm. So I am not pro when it happens the first time, move. Sometimes it could be an accident, but the trails are there. When a man is violent, violent is violent. Mm. Do you know, some men may be under provocation at that time, not the usual, but in most cases, when you see the trails, mm -hmm. when you see the, yeah. please move on. Just move. Mm. All right. Thank you so much, ladies. And we, empowerment. Yeah. Empowerment. We have to be empowered. It's yeah. Yeah. I like the point yeah. you raised about economic yeah. Yeah. empowerment. You know what? We're going to do this again. If we, if I, we, because we are all lawyers. 
<laughs> by association, I've become a lawyer. <laughs> so thank you so much. I mean, please, for any woman out there, it is not worth you dying for. Just walk away. Find the strength. There are people out there to help you legally to pursue the matter. So in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. Um, the domestic part doesn't matter. Violence is violence. It's a short and a simple, um, um, what's it called, quote. Now, it's been a very insightful conversation. Keep all the conversation going on all our social media platforms at We Show Africa 1 on Twitter, at We Show Africa on IG, and at We Show on Facebook. As we continue to hear what you're saying now, we'll see you live tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring you another great conversation. Enjoy. Thank you.